Hello and welcome to the Seven Ways Podcast. This podcast is brought to you by the Seven Ways Book, on demand and in digital forms. I welcome any comments or questions. Rabbi Bailey, B A I L E Y, at the Seven Ways dot com. It's all spelled out, no numbers. Today we're talking about the seven spheros within Tiferes. We talked about how Tiferes is the clawship of Prat, something great and broad, captured within a detail. Metaphor. Creativity. Capturing something. The snow globe. The world within a grain of sand. So we begin. Tiferes Chesed, Tiferes Kubur, Tiferes Tiferes. This incredibly highlights the creative process. This is something that naturally healthy creative people do. This is something that is embedded within the spheros. Chesed Shebet Tiferes. Unmitigated thinking, brainstorming. Gavur Shebet Tiferes. Where do you have restriction of this brainstorming? It is the creative process to absorb, incubate, and create. The incubation takes place between transferring from Chesed within Tiferes, Chesed Shebet Tiferes, to Gavur Shebet Tiferes. There's an unlimited amount of information and visuals, and it gets whittled down to something that pops out of a person. It's almost a magical creation because it comes from the mind, but it's always within the tangible world. Creation was ex nihilo a long time ago. What we're doing is called Yitzira, as the Malbim explains in the parlance. The nuance is that things are being formed, but there is a certain amount of newness and creativity based on the creative person. So... Chesed Shebet Tiferes, we see Yaakov Avinu, Yaakov, Jacob, the paradigm for someone who used a Tiferes Mita, sitting in his tent. He is meditating, he's thinking. He was Yoshev Ohalim. He's sitting there. Of course, this relates to Torah study, but he, aside from being a great scholar, and all of the seven Roim, the seven paradigms for the Spheros, the shepherds, were most likely great scholars, of course. They each wielded a mita at the right time. So he is thinking and creating. Gavur Shabbat Tiferes. Yaakov Avinu becomes an actor. He puts on the clothing of someone else. He has to act like Esav to take over for Esav's uh, shirking his responsibility. And through Gavur Shabbat Tiferes, through capturing all the details of another person, he becomes another person. Incredible. Mind-blowing. He's that he becomes an actor in the text, becoming somebody else. Anochi Yisab Bicharecha. That's who I am now. Tiferes Shabbat Tiferes. That is Klal Shabbat Prat within Klal Shabbat Prat, a captured detail within a captured detail expression of creativity. Yaakov Avinu dreams. He has dreams, symbols. Dreams have manifest content and latent content. Latent content. What is the message and what is the exaggerated part of this? Metaphor. Chesed Shebet Tiferes. Message to you is, if you have an idea, a brainstorm, don't listen to that little uh, voice in your head that probably came from someone else in your life, now or in the past. To forget it, you won't. it won't be of value. Save all your ideas. Many great rabbis say this. Save, save them, collect them. Maybe only one or two will pan out. Maybe you'll think of a new way just to organize your home. Maybe you'll think of a new way to do your job. Maybe you'll think of something that's patented one day. Unmitigated thinking, unmitigated creativity, capturing something else. Don't be afraid to practice art or drawing, even if it is mere stick figures. In therapy, I can't tell you how many times someone doing art therapy says, I can only do stick figures. Guess what? By the time they're done, those beautiful stick figures have captured something about their feelings. And people get loosey-goosey. They put some music on. Let things flow and be creative. Put music on. Go against go against uh, depression and getting into nitty-gritty details. The Gavur Shepet Tiferes is beautiful because it can accurately, this Mida can be used to accurately capture something, an idea, an image. But it can also be too heavy. That Gavur can can bog someone down. So we got to shake out of it. We got to use the spring. 
Now, after Pesach, to shake out of the doldrums of the winter, focusing on the negativity, we have to balance those mitos together. In fact, there is a neuroscientist named James Fallon. He is famously known for studying his own brain by accident. Uh, the uh, lab assistants tricked him and showed him his own brain scan. Because after all, who do you first test on is the grad students around you in the lab. Uh, and they showed him a, a scan of his brain, and he said, wow, this person's a sociopath. He's, this, this James Fallon studied sociopaths. You can actually see it within the brain. And he saw that he was a sociopath. He just managed it well. Very interesting story. He was speaking about creativity, and he said if someone is extremely depressed, that part of the brain that creates is not activated. So people then ask me when they hear this, they say, well, all these creative people are depressed. Well, let me tell you something. It's, a, it's, it's more of a, it comes, the real creativity comes from a moderate type of depression and, and it's a catharsis for the creative person. My, I asked my father, after you play the blues, aren't you depressed afterwards? You're rehashing all the upsetness from your past. He said, no. Afterwards, I'm carefree. I drive home happy from the gig. Everything is great. The... We're getting a little bit into Tiferis Hode now. Hode Jehovah Tiferis, the emotions of creativity. The creativity can be a catharsis for the negativity. So someone says in Blue Blues, you know, my partner left me. So taking that Gavura, that the, the Gavura, Gavura de Tuma, the restriction on the self, and processing it through the creative lens can create a healing experience. So the slight depression, upsetness, capturing something negative, can be captured, but uh, too depressed, too much gavura, and you're bogged down in the incubation process, in the whittling away process. You see, getting back to that chisel, chiseling away of the marble, if you chisel too much away, you just have marble dust. You chisel away too much wood, you're not woodworking to make beautiful creations, you just have sawdust. You have balancing to chesed and Gavura, you come out with a Teferis image idea truly captured. Think about it. If you throw paint on the ground, it's not beautiful. But then again, if your mind begins to, to see some accidental patterns and imagery, that has a little bit of Gavura to the Chesed, a little bit of form to the substance. My wife always says, what about Jackson Pollock paintings? You know, See, that is like the most extreme ches uh, ratio of chesed to gavur you can get. You have tremendous substance with very little form. Even in that, there's art. And you can go the other way. People make these hand-drawn pictures that are so detailed that they look real. So, well, we might as well just take a photograph, you know. It's still beautiful. It's an amazing accomplishment. So... We cannot get too bogged down. Now, now this is... I can't tell you how many times this comes in therapy... Because, you know, the left brain is trying to be all linear. Someone's hardened themselves or analytic. The right brain is a little more linked to the creative side of a person. So if somebody is bogged down and they want to feel creative, they want to feel elated and humorous and spontaneous, that leads to a tremendous contradiction has to be resolved. So for, you know, for our intents and purposes... So many of us, as we spoke about in the Gavura series, have that stricture, bogging down negative voices. We have to undo the voice through the method of the moderator in the last series. Or the other side, Tiferis, we need to change our habits, more music, more laughter, to make us more elated. Okay. But let's not skip. Let's Tiferis Neitzach. We see Yaakov Avinu engaging in animal husbandry with the sheep, the sheep, collective singular. So, there is definitely a divine province, Ashgach Apratis element to this exercise that he was doing, of course. At the same time, what he is doing is very is highly scientific. So, Neitzach Sheba Tiferis, where do you find that all details have to be scientific and accurate? within Klal Shiva Prat, within creativity or metaphor, so to speak. So this is really invention here, using information and science to create inventions or discoveries within the universe.
That's Avra, um, Yaakov Avinu feverishly dealing with the sheep, that part of his life. And I bring a Lahavdil, even though he was Jewish, Lahavdil examples from Einstein. Uh, this is from the New York Times, Yimach um, Shemam So when Einstein ran away from his school in Germany, he hated the emphasis on rote learning rather than visual imagination. He enrolled in a Swiss village school based on the educational philosophy of Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi, who believed in encouraging students to visualize concepts. When he was there, Einstein tried to picture what it would be like to travel so fast that you caught up with the light beam. Listen to this. He didn't study information and find what was missing, and that was his discovery. He used his imagination to first. He used his visual acumen and his guessing, his intuition, his hunch in order to bring forth innovation and newness within discovery of the universe. I, when he sat at the patent office, he visualized how the item would work. They say about Nikola Tesla that the... Uh, Earlier on in the creative process, he would sit there and visualize all the different components that would be going on. So Nesach Shepeti Ferris tells us that if we believe there's something more out there, that we can find it in a kosher way. Nesach, it has to be processed through morality and science. Innovations can be kosher, but they must be kept kosher too. We see this through tremendous technological advances. Cell phones, internet. Internet is the greatest provider of Torah. It's the greatest pitfall for people, too. That is Neitzach Shebeti Ferris. And with Neitzach Shebeti Ferris, we must contrast it with the inverse brother, Tiferes Shebeti Neitzach. And we have an incredible insight. We come to an amazing agada, Moshe and Betzalel. So what came first in the creation of the Mishkan? Were they supposed to build the building and then the Kalim and the Aron? Or were they supposed to build the Aaron and the Kalim? So, certain discrepancy in the text. Moshe says the Kalim, the vessels, the items in the Mishkan. And Betzal says, no, you wouldn't build furniture and not have a house over it. You need to build the house first. So this Midrash is not just answering something in the text. It's meant to be a deep, deep metaphor for us. Moshe Rabbeinu is the prototype for Netzach. He is the factual person who is trying to give you the most accurate fact. His intuition is usually subsumed within what is the original intent of the author. What does the Kodesh Baruch Hu want here? If the Masor is broken later on with us, what is the, what is the best psaq we can give? And that's Halacha. Whereas Betzalel, representative of someone who is not Netzach Tiferes, in this instance, he's Tiferes Netzach. He believes in the building first and the kalim later. The metaphor is that we have a united universe with wisdom and patterns, and we need to realize that the details come after that. The details will fit into where your imagination goes. If your imagination is wrong, you throw out that project and pick another one. Seven out of eight businesses fail. Most inventions don't work out. You keep discovering, you keep fiddling. In the Myers-Briggs, they would say it's a P versus J. It has to be definitive versus leave it open. Let's keep going. Leave it open. And this is also true of philosophy, hashkafa, the Valtenschung. You know, some people really live for what is the halacha? How do we strive to do that? It's become pervasive in the yeshiva system. God bless that we have this Torah. But we, we, need, we need to know that other people need the broad picture. They need something conceptual. The midrash, the the Chumash with Hashkafa, the philosophy, they can't live on halacha alone. They'll, they can keep halacha, but paradoxically, they're more likely to keep halacha and be happy if they can do something that's stimulating for both sides of the brain, especially the right side, the whole brain. It's, it, has to, it needs to be interesting, basimcha, conceptual, dance, there's dancing at the wedding, there's midrash, there's applying this to daily life. There has to be deeper meaning behind this. This answers up a double lashon in the Masilis Sharm that he brings over there. He seems to say the same thing twice. No. We need to remember there's something deeper out there. It's within the confines of Kadosh Baruch Hu's Bria, the kosher creation. But 
We need to know some people need that Batsalo mentality. Tiferes Shebenetzach. We need to have the Tiferes kept kosher, but fun and stimulating and conceptual. Tiferes Hod. Hod Shebe Tiferes. Emotions within creativity. The most stark example I always bring is art therapy, that using imagery, visual imagery, a person can heal emotions, emote emotions, bring them out to the forefront, help people remember things they forgot so they can be healed. A little bit of you sewed in there too, yes, to the psychology and the metaphor. There's always some overlap and bleeding there. An actor can evoke emotion in the audience. Similar scenario to our lives. We relate, we feel it. And, per, and uh, conversely, an actor can be brought to emotion through the acting. It can change them. We act out the Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim story at this time of year to evoke emotion, to inculcate the message in our being of freedom, of experience, of becoming different people. Personal message to us. Symbolism is an antidepressant. Humor is a great antidepressant. We need to know that these things affect us emotionally. Listening to the news, getting bogged down, is not good. Hode, the prat, can exist with chashibus outside of the claw. We need to find ways that we feel special. We think the world is sane and positive. Too much negative news brings us down. Someone once said to me that they were questioning their faith because of the news. I said, get off the news. This person reduced it by 99%. Guess what? They're in their Tiferes bubble and they're happy. They get the news they need to know about their safety and the health, but they don't get bogged down. The world can be portrayed in opposite ways. The Haman way on the 7th of Adar, Moshe died. But we know on the 7th of Adar, Moshe was born. That's why Haman was the master of slander, but he was bested. And a message for Netzach Shabbat Tiferes. It's okay to think of something new. There is such a thing as newness that is still kosher. I'm about to bring something that's a little bit Yisod, but Yisod and Tiferes are the most innovative. They're the Das Midos. When Yisro came, to advise Moshe, he did not tell him to change the halacha. He showed him a way to apply the halacha. Halacha and kosherness can be applied in different ways without breaching morality. Yeso Chepetiferas. Architecture, art, music can bring people together, bond them. Being in a play with people brings them together. Productions they have at schools. Where something is placed in a store can lead to more sales. Trusting someone because they are dressed nicely or taller. This is how you sew that all the different components are brought together within aesthetics or creativity, imagery, art. At this stage, I do want to say that as a Jewish people, we must remember to be careful with our messages and our plays. Uh, there are a tremendous amount of productions and plays that include shocking Holocaust, Shoah information. And I believe, of course, it's important to remember what happened. But we run the risk of keeping this trauma with us, which is not healthy, and of scaring younger children. My daughter told me that at some of these productions... Young people are frightened. They don't know what to do. So I highly recommend that we take the lesson with us, but leave the trauma behind. Similar to the last series with Kivura, where someone can be a guilt, have a guilt tripper. We have the, the, the negative rehashing of the past. We need to take the messages with us, but not to rehash. And it's a balance. Maybe once a year, there's a certain days dedicated to these things. That's why Tisha B'Av is the day to be depressed and to remember things, so we remember them, but we don't walk around all the time with a heavy head. We have reasons to repent and to be serious on the fast days. There is no mitzvah to be depressed. On the contrary, tremendous averos come from this. 
And now we get to Machus Shebetiferes. Yisod Shebetiferes would, that concept would teach us to bring humor to others, bring beauty to them, bring prayer to them. We mentioned Tiferes relates to prayer too. Moving our lips on this earth, moving our bodies and our lips here, affects what goes on up there. We're the, we are the prat here, the clouds and Shemayim. That's Rachamim. Chesed Givur Rachamim. Chesed Din Rachamim. Chesed Givur Tiferes. We bring the big picture along. Hashem, don't punish us. Look at the big picture. That's taking us from the prat of Givur to the bigger to the bigger picture of Tiferes imagery. Picture the upside down triangle that's in my head. Machel Shabbat Tiferes. Creator presentations and media reign supreme. Investigative journalism has been shoved to the side. One can still find it if they look very hard at alternative media, but mainstream media has fallen prey to influence and people believe it. People end up being sheeple and believe what's put out there for the masses. Not everything is false, of course. But you have to make your ears like a millhopper, like the Gemara in Chagiga. It takes tremendous sifting through information and asking the correct people. Visual portrayals are powerful, damaging. Lush and horror kills. Slander impacts people for decades. At the same time, Creativity can bring life to those who are sick. It's the jesters in the famous Agada who are pointed out as the only, only ones in the whole shuk, the marketplace, who will go to Olam Haba because they gladden people. So symbols can be interpreted in many ways. We must take the lesson of Malchus Shepet Tiferes to be very careful with portrayals. Be very, very careful with portray portraying things if it's visual, auditory, experiential. But we can use those means to impact the world. We have to move on from Tiferes to Netzach, from symbology to scientific information and absolute truth.